Bell Station salute Trenton, New Jersey, rich in the history of this nation. Rich in the history of this nation, third most historic city in the United States, site of one of the key battles of the Revolutionary War, capital of the Garden State since 1790. It was in Trenton the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence took place. Today, Trenton is hub of one of the greatest concentrations of people and an industry anywhere on earth. Caught up with the world of the times and deeply involved with one of the most important urban renewal programs in the nation. This is Roy Nassau. Trenton looks forward to the future with confidence, but no one is more realistic about the present than Trenton's mayor, Arthur J. Holland. This is a difficult time for the great and old cities of America, and certainly Trenton is one of these. Much of the nation's governmental, uh, certainly military, industrial, cultural, and commercial history has been written here and throughout the Delaware Valley. But now we, as is the case with so many other of our nation's old cities, must literally rebuild. And certainly this is a far more costly and difficult process than is the original construction. Mayor Holland's remodeled and modernized home in one of Trenton's older neighborhoods is only minutes away from his city hall office. He made national headlines when he moved into the integrated neighborhood a few years back. But the mayor feels at home with Mrs. Holland and their little girls, and he feels his home is just right. We consider Trenton a fine place in which to live. Uh, residentially, I think a city should be all things to all people. This means that a community should provide uh, various types of housing. We wanted to buy an old house and fix it up like this, and this is what we've done. On the other hand, uh, even though we're such an old city, you will see the most modern types of uh, houses being constructed, although the emphasis these days is on apartments, high rise of all income levels. I think in our architecture, so far as housing is concerned, uh, give a pretty good uh, cross-section of what has been contemporary during different periods uh, of the nation's history, actually. It's important also to uh, provide adequate recreational facilities wherever the housing is. We have in Trenton uh, what for a city of our size and characteristics is probably as uh, notable as uh, is Fairmount in Philadelphia, and that's our Cadwallader Park in the western section. We are trying now to implement some plans which were first talked of at the turn of the century, actually, and that is to see that there are open spaces, parks and recreational spots in every section of our city. Trenton is a city of churches, more than 100 in fact. It is also headquarters for the Episcopal Diocese of New Jersey with the very Reverend Alfred L. Banyard as bishop. The immediate past president of the Greater Trenton Council of Churches is Reverend S. Howard Woodson, member of the State Assembly and Trenton City Council, longtime observer of the religious life of the state capitol. Well, I think that Trenton enjoys a very fine church life. I think that the various churches of our community are more and more recognizing their responsibility to the community outside of their immediate congregations. There are a number of churches, for instance, that are now beginning to go through the community and invite all of the people who are in their particular communities to uh, visit and to join if they desire to do so. I know a number of churches that are today holding interracial meetings. There are a number of them that are holding fellowship meetings. They are becoming more and more involved, I feel, in the urban renewal uh, end of our uh, city. They are becoming concerned about the various problems of the community. Sociologically, you usually discover that churches are perhaps the last of the major social organizations or institutions to move out in an, in an aggressive way in community affairs. 
And I believe that uh, in the days to come, you will find the churches of Trenton making an even greater contribution to the welfare of our community than they have in the past. The sixth largest Catholic diocese in the United States is that of Trent. The faithful are served by more than 450 priests under the spiritual leadership of His Excellency Bishop George W. R. You can't move around Trenton without rubbing elbows with history. For instance, just up the street is the famous battle monument which marks the site of the famous Battle of Trenton in the year seven, around Christmas in 1776. And the site on which we are standing uh, also has some historic importance because this was the site uh, of the uh, headquarters of, the, of Colonel Rawl, who was the commander of the Hessians in the Battle of Tr Trenton. He was wounded during the battle and he was brought back to a building which stood on this site originally and it was there he died on December the 27th, 1776. The Diocese of Trenton was uh, established in the year 1881, being cut off from the Archdiocese of Newark, which originally embraced the entire state of New Jersey. The present Diocese of Trenton embraces some 3,700 square miles, and uh, we have somewhat over 596,000 Catholics in this Diocese of Trenton at the present time. Uh, in the immediate Trenton area, we have uh, 19 churches, uh, of which 17 have their own parochial schools. Our people have a rich and diversified educational and cultural background. Many of their ancestors came from different areas of uh, the old country. We have uh, people of Polish ancestry, of Hungarian ancestry, Slovak ancestry, German ancestry, and uh, Irish ancestry. Another parochial school in Trenton is the Herzl Zion Hebrew School, which provides religious teaching and elementary education for its students. One of the busier buildings in the city is the Boys Club. This was built by the Delaware Valley United Fund, organized in 1950. Its active president is Sidney Stevens, chairman of the board of the First Trenton National Bank. The DVUF has 58 health, welfare, and character building youth services. For the past three years, the fund campaign has gone over the top. The good works of member agencies like the Boys Club and its many outstanding facilities and instructions for the youth of our community, the Mercer Street Friends Center, Retarded Children's Center, and the like, work so concerned with human welfare is a continuing responsibility. DVUF is recognized as one of the top United Funds in the country, and we are proud of this singular honor. Trenton is a city steeped in American history, and it continues to add pages with each succeeding year. Education is a prime concern to all Trentonians, its educational roots going back to 1693. Today, the educational system, its innovations and training programs, a source of pride to Trenton Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Richard T. Beck. Well, the Trenton schools have some 18,000 pupils. Uh, we have 15 elementary schools, five junior high schools, and one comprehensive senior high school with some 4,000 pupils. We are growing at the rate of about 700 pupils a year. We have building problems. Uh, we have uh, done a remarkable job in Trenton, I think, in improving our school buildings. We have actually torn down most of our old school buildings in the heart of the city, and we have built brand new school buildings. This school that we're in now has a brand new wing that has just been completed. We have an eight-room addition uh, ready for September. We have four other buildings on the drawing boards ready to go. One program awaited with great interest by Dr. Beck, Operation Head Start, gets underway soon for the disadvantaged preschool children. Sponsored by United Progress Incorporated, the city's poverty arm, with Executive Vice President Gregory Farrell in charge. This Head Start program is uh, receiving a great deal of interest uh, in Trenton. Uh, how, is it, how is the application coming along uh, in Washington, Mr. Farrell? I think we'll get the money, and uh, I'd be very relieved when we do, because I'm uh, 
Just got a call from Washington a couple of days ago, commending our project and and analyzing pieces of it. I'm. I thought for a while there, if it didn't get funded, that both of us would have to leave town. Yes, we have some 700 youngsters who are going to have programs very much like this program you see in this room. Uh, these youngsters are going to be get, gotten ready for kindergarten next fall. We feel it will have a great deal on their adjustment to school in September. This uh, group of youngsters uh, in back of us is really demonstrating one of the most important features of our program, the story hour. This develops communication skills. Parents could help very much if they would read stories to their children. This is one of the things we hope to do this summer with our youngsters in Head Start. Here I come, shouted the wicked wolf. Splash! Into the pot of boiling water fell the wicked wolf. Quickly the little pig popped the cover on the pot, and that was the end of the wolf. Then the third little pig sat down to write a letter to his mother. He wrote with his best pen and his finest handwriting, and he asked her to come and visit him in his fine red brick house. Now let's have the boys get up and quietly get in the circle for the rhythm band. From preschool students to those seeking higher education, the Trenton and Mercer County area offers some of the finest educational opportunities in the United States, according to Superintendent Beck. Yes, we're very fortunate in this area to have some outstanding colleges. Princeton University, for example, of course, is nationally known, has been working with us very closely with programs for the gifted. They're also going to work this summer with programs for some disadvantaged youngsters here. We're very uh, happy that Princeton's involved with us. Of course, we have Ryder College, which is presently celebrating its centennial. Ryder has really been a, a great feature in Trenton for many, many years. It has some 3,000 youngsters now. It's developed a beautiful campus, and it is one of the outstanding schools in the country. Uh, Trenton State, of course, uh, was founded back in 1855. Trenton State College, their uh, uh, baseball rivals and soccer rivals and basketball rivals with Ryder College. And we feel very fortunate. Trenton State, of course, is working with us with the State Department of Education on many other projects in Trenton. We also have the Trenton Junior College, which is filling a great need. They have some 1,000 students uh, who are spending their first two years at junior college, and then they tr can transfer to any of the better colleges in this part of the country. But even as Trenton State continues its exciting expansion program and Ryder's new buildings near completion, the implementation of a community college is the deep concern of the Mercer County Freeholders. And Richard Coffey, director of the board, president of the New Jersey Board of Freeholders Association, is fully convinced that's the answer. I think that Mercer County will have a countywide community college within a year or two. The State Board of Education and the Citizen Study Committee has re recommended that such a facility be constructed. I would foresee that the Trenton Junior College will be merged into a new community college and that in the very near future, our county and the city of Trenton will have a first class and first rate countywide community college. Not too far from the center of Trenton, the Mercer County Airport, adding new services at every turn. Allegheny Airlines maintains regular schedules for those doing business in New Jersey's capital city. Additionally, there are a great number of private planes using the complete facilities of the airport. It's not uncommon to see a pilot putting in flying time after a hard day at the books or in the office. And keeping Trenton abreast of the news, whether it comes from the airport, the colleges, the capital, or city hall, two outstanding newspapers, the Trenton Times and the Trentonian, soon to move into its handsome new offices and printing plant. Signs of activity indicative of Mercer County's prosperity, according to Freeholder Coffee. With this uh, tremendous uh, uh, growth and prosperity and the economic development that we're experiencing, county services are asked to expand year by year. And to meet this need, our old courthouse facility and the annex building just will not handle these services. We're about to enter into an agreement with the city of Trenton to build a new county administration building as part of the city's urban renewal program. The dredging of the channel for the port of Trenton continues. The city looking ahead to when increased water traffic will be a reality. 
The president of the Greater Trenton Chamber of Commerce, G. Alfred Hess, is pleased with Trenton's greatly diversified industry. We have over 500 industries employing about 40,000 people. There are only four of them that employ over 1,000, and one of which would be the Turnstead Division of General Motors, our largest. Suppose we go look at some of them. The sprawling complex that is the Turnstead Division of General Motors is one of seven such plants the world's largest manufacturer of automobiles and automobile parts has throughout the nation. The big facility is concerned only with the hardware for GM products. The busy assembly lines turn out millions of parts each year, some easily identifiable, others going into the cars at spots unfamiliar to the average motorist. One fact that usually comes to this reporter's mind whenever he tours a huge industrial plant, the great number of women employed, a task not quickly thought of as for the gal. But then again, it's recalled that in many plants, the sensitive touch of the female is more to be desired than that of the male. The manufacturer of the wire rope that was to revolutionize the industry was started in Trenton nearly 125 years ago by John A. Robley. He developed the art that made the wire rope so much in use for the building of bridges. One of the most famous examples, the skill of the Roblings, the Brooklyn Bridge, which in July 1964 was designated a National Historical Monument. Even today, the craft demands great skill from its workers in turning out the many sizes of rope needed by Roblings customers all over the world. The steady demand for Roblings products, as well as those turned out by the Turnstead Division of General Motors, are reasons why the employment trend in the Trenton and Mercer County area remains good. In this day of automation, just about everywhere you look, the handcrafted items turned out at Stengel Pottery, one of America's oldest and located in Trenton, offer a sharp contrast in industrial production methods. The methods used to turn out the final product feature such fascinating names as jiggering, and gobing, carving, sager, to mention just a few. But the delicate touch is much in evidence at Stengel, the long years of the work much to be admired. Oddly enough, one of the biggest selling items at Stengel right now is not artware or a dinnerware pattern, but an item that appears to be a vase when it comes out of the mold, turn it upside down, decorate it, is just right for holding milady's wig when it's not in use for special occasions. And De Laval turbines have been used on generations of ships, both Merchant Marine and U.S. Navy. De Laval is part of the tradition of power on the sea. The company will be 65 years old next year. The mammoth units being prepared for use at De Laval are dwarfed inside the huge plant at Trenton. The company also turns out pumps and compressors, gears and filter systems. And the De Laval service and repair personnel do not limit themselves as far as their efforts go. Their motto is anywhere, anytime, any job. The success of all these plants makes the New Jersey capital great for industry, according to Chamber of Commerce President Hess. The United States Naval Air Turbine Test Station, for example, in Ewing Township, is the very large installation where the Navy tests the performance of jet engines. RCA's David Sarnoff Research Center up near Princeton is where many of the new developments uh, such as the Ranger satellite, were first perfected. Our total employment in the area runs about 115,000 people. So that's 75,000 in non-manufacturing, including government. As governor of New Jersey, it gives me certainly a great thrill to participate in this salute to Trenton. Uh, I'm standing here between two of our great buildings, uh, uh, not as new indeed as some of the older, uh, newer buildings that I'll tell you about in just a few minutes. Uh, one of them, of course, is the State House in which my distinguished predecessor Woodrow Wilson sat as governor of New Jersey. And facing me is the State House Annex where uh, for many years I presided uh, or worked uh, rather as a judge of the New Jersey Superior Court and the Appellate Division so that this is all familiar territory to me. New Jersey is the largest employer of any of the industries in the locality of Trenton, Mercer County. Uh, we have something like 32,000 state employees in total, and more than 11,000 of them are located right here in Trenton or in its immediate environs. Now, some of the buildings that you'll see 
a great new complex right here on the bend of the Delaware River, which I think is symbolic of the new Trenton, uh, will include the uh, education building, just a beautiful place, and houses, of course, a department deeply concerned with possibly our most important future project in New Jersey, and that is the education of our youth. And then we have a magnificent cultural center, with great planetarium, museum rooms, libraries. It's uh, something of which I'm very, very proud. We have a labor and industry building, which costs uh, possibly $14 million. And then we have the health and agriculture building, of course. Uh, some people have commented on its odd and modernistic shape. It will house uh, many of the activities of those departments. The cost of that was almost nine million dollars. So you see that uh, this uh, capital construction program, and we're not finished yet by a, a long way. A collector of antique banks, some of them valued well into four figures, president of the Greater Trenton Symphony Association, chairman of the board of the Trenton Trust Company, and a busy, busy lady is Mrs. Mary G. Roebling, whose townhouse is located right in the heart of Trenton. It's a fine focal point for the many activities that occupy this gracious lady, equally at home discussing the financial world or the world of arts and letters and music. And there's no doubt that her hometown is her first love. We have a wonderful building known as the War Memorial Building. It was constructed uh, following uh, the First World War. But you know it seats 2,000 people. And we hold many of our great civic affairs there, one of which is the Greater Trenton Symphony. We expect a brilliant season uh, again next year. Now I'd like to tell you that we had the Salute to Trenton Ball here, too, uh, not so long ago. And uh, that was a salute to Lafayette, who also uh, spent some time in Trenton in his sojourn in the United States. And so you see that with all these historic monuments and landmarks, uh, that uh, this city is truly a great city, worthy of being the capital of a great state. We have a great historic city here, and we're also very proud of it that we really want to welcome people from all over the world. Uh, actually, the town of Trenton was named after a man by the name of Trent. His home is still standing, and it's a small museum. People come to study the architecture of this property from all over the world. It's so pure in its detail. It's open daily uh, from 9 to 5, and you'd be surprised the hundreds of people that visit it as they do uh, the famous barracks, which was the headquarters for uh, George Washington uh, in the year of 1775 and 6 in the winter. And uh, these barracks uh, are fully furnished and also act as a museum for uh, visiting uh, dignitaries as well as the school children from all over the eastern seaboard. Trenton is concerned about its downtown shopping and what's more important is doing something about it in more ways than one. Coordinating a multi-million dollar effort is Raymond Steen, president of the Broad Street Bank and the Greater Trenton Council. We have been primarily concerned with the physical revitalization of our city. For many years now, business and the city officials have been disturbed by the movement of businesses to suburban areas and newly constructed shopping centers. In view of this, uh, it has become necessary for us to think of ways to create new taxes. Most cities have used urban renewal, such as our city. We have used urban renewal in two or three sections of the city. But the Greater Trenton Council became interested in a center city mall, commonly referred to now as the Trenton Mall, which takes an entire city block and will be refinanced by private money and not by government funds. The new Trenton Mall will have two major department stores, a large hotel, specialty shops, plenty of parking. We'll cover three city blocks, be air conditioned as well as heated. The developer architect is John Graham of New York, who also designed the Seattle World's Fair Space Needle. Well, our uh, early studies, uh, preliminary studies for Greater Trenton Council indicated that uh, Trenton had all of the ingredients for a, an excellent uh, major redevelopment uh, in the uh, core area. 
the um, core area of a city uh, uh, must be a live, vital uh, part uh, of that city if the city is to uh, uh, continue to grow and prosper. We felt uh, in Trenton that the city and <coughs> the uh, uh, citizens had uh, this necessary ingredient. Trenton's merchants are by no means letting suburban shopping center competition lure their customers away. Trenton's center city features outstanding stores, outstanding names, and new downtown parking facilities have been introduced. Soon to come, a pattern of one-way streets that gave Mayor Holland, his city council, considerable moments for pause before being passed. But City Council President Frank Walsh feels the move is a good one. On this uh, board, uh, we have the outline of the new one-way street pattern in downtown Trenton. As you'll notice, the streets are typical of the old streets uh, in old cities. They're narrow and they were designed for uh, the horse and carriage days. And as a result of that, uh, although we have excellent peripheral highways leading to the city of Trenton, we have uh, great difficulty getting these cars into the heart of our city. With this new one-way pattern, it will enable the cars to get from the uh, freeways to the heart of the city uh, in considerably less time than it requires now. Uh, it will increase the traffic flow anywhere from 20 to 25 percent. Trenton's health services are excellent and growing greater. Its hospitals concern themselves with the welfare of all citizens of Mercer County. And the facilities range from, well, baby clinics to golden age clubs. The banks of Trenton are as solid as the buildings which house them, and they cater to the business community, industrial community, and private citizen with equal efficiency and dispatch. But to Trenton native and Congressman Frank H. Thompson, Jr., the answer to Trenton's success is obvious. Although we tend to measure progress in physical terms, the strength of Trenton, I think, lies in a very real sense in the worth of its people. This historic city has opened its arm and given welcome to all of the great ethnic groups that have found their way to our shore. To call the roll, all we need to do is read the roster of our city's churches. It's truly a city of all nations and all races. I've never been more optimistic in my life about the future of Trenton. I think that with the great work that's been done in the rehabilitation and the plans for urban renewal that are in works progress, that no city on the eastern seaboard has a more brilliant future than the city of Trenton. It's quite a thrill to work uh, in this area. And uh, I'm quite happy uh, that I am a Trenton man and uh, join with a very full heart uh, and a sincere warm feeling in this salute to Trenton and to its very able official family headed by the progressive and hardworking young mayor, Arthur Holland. I see a greater Trenton emerging a city which will combine the finest of the old with the best that is new. I continue to envision a Trenton which will provide the employment, living, and recreational opportunities of which the planners and the people dream. This vision will sustain us during the still difficult years ahead, the trying transition years which are the threshold of the Trenton of tomorrow. The WFIL station salute Trenton, New Jersey third most historic city in the nation, capital of the Garden State. Looking forward to the future with confidence. What Trenton makes will help make a still better world of tomorrow. Roy Nassau reporting.